For a convergent alternating series, when approximating the sum of a series by using only the first n terms, the error will be less than or equal to the absolute value of the n plus first term. This is the next term, or the first unused term. Approximating the sum of the series only using the first n terms is called s sub n. For example one, approximate the sum of by using the first six terms. That means we're going to use this series, we're going to use the first six, we're going to add the first six terms in this series. We'll be using this alternating series and we will approximate the sum of this alternating series by adding the first six terms. So we will be evaluating s sub six, the sixth partial sum. By plugging in one, we will get one as our first term. When you plug in two, you get negative one over two factorial. The next will be positive one over three factorial. And this continues. How many terms did they ask for us to use? The first six terms. Using a calculator to add these first six terms, I get 0.631944. That is the sixth partial sum approximating this series. In example two, they're asking us to find the upper bound for the remainder for the approximation from example one. They're actually asking us how far off from the actual infinite sum is this sixth partial sum. For a convergent alternating series, the absolute value of each term must be less than or equal to the absolute value of the term before. One half is less than one. One over six is less than one half. One over 24 is less than one over six, and so on. Let's take a look at the next four terms in the series. Yes, they are all indeed less than or equal to the term before. Absolute value of both of those. I'm going to actually graph some partial sums for you so you can see what is visually happening each time we add on another term in an alternating series that is convergent. Here you can see I've evaluated the first six partial sums. So we had already done the sixth partial sum, but I did the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. The first partial sum is just the very first term. So when n equals 1, my sum is 1. When n equals 2, or the second partial sum, I take 1 and I subtract 1 half. When n equals 3, our partial sum is 2 thirds. When n equals 4, we get 5 over 8. At 5, we get 19 over 30, which is approximately 0.633. And S sub 6 is just a little bit lower. It looks as though this alternating series, the sum, will converge around 0.6. So the infinite sum would be about 0.6. The difference, or the height, between each partial sum is equal to the next term. So this would be A sub 2, right? Because the difference between 1 and 1 half is 1 half, which was our second term. The difference between the second partial sum and the third partial sum is the third term, a sub 3. Then our difference is a sub 4. Then our difference is a sub 5. So if we have approximated with six terms, the greatest distance between the sixth partial sum and the actual sum is going to be the next term, a sub 7, the first unused term. The sixth partial sum will not be more off from the actual sum than the first unused term. Notice that our first unused term is the largest amongst all of the unused terms. And if this is a convergent alternating series, that is how a convergent alternating series behaves. The limit of the non-alternating part, or the a sub n, must equal zero for an alternating series to converge. Therefore, the first unused term is the largest term out of all of the unused terms. And since each term gets us closer to our sum, the largest distance 
or the error would be our first unused term. That makes our alternating series remainder less than or equal to the first unused term. For clarification, that would be the absolute value of that term. Because this is an alternating series, the first unused term could easily be negative. And that is approximately 0 0.000198. So the sixth partial sum is a great estimation of the actual sum. Another way that I can write alternating series remainder for this particular one is that I used the sixth partial sum to approximate. And if I took that approximation and subtracted the actual sum, and then if I made that absolute value, the error or the difference between my partial sum and my actual sum would be less than or equal to absolute value 1 over 7 factorial. So the upper bound for our remainder is 1 over 7 factorial. So we found the upper bound for the remainder. Now let's find upper and lower bounds for the actual sum of the series in example 1. Because s sub 6 is below the actual sum, and each partial sum after that gets closer to the actual sum, s sub 6 will be our lower bound. Now we found an upper bound for the remainder. The remainder is how far off we are from the actual sum. So if the lowest possible approximation is s sub 6, then the highest possible approximation or the highest possible bound is s sub 6 plus the upper bound of our alternating series remainder, 1 over 7 factorial. Use a calculator to get decimal approximations to complete this inequality. This means that the actual sum is between 0.613944 and 0.6321429. We may not have a formula to find the actual sum of an alternating series, but we can approximate the sum and also find its margin of error. For number four, we're going to approximate this infinite series with an error of less than 0.001. So I want the alternating series remainder to be less than or equal to 1 over 1,000. Often the way that AP will phrase this is they'll ask for what is the fewest number of terms you would need in order to make an approximation for which the error is less than or equal to 1 over 1,000. Let's begin by looking at the first few terms. Plug in 0, 1, 2, 3. Each time I add or subtract, I'm getting closer and closer to the actual sum. The alternating series remainder should be the first unused term. So I just need the first unused term to be less than or equal to 1 over 1,000. What is 1 over 6 factorial? That's 1 over 720. Is 1 over 720 less than or equal to 1 over 1,000? No, it's not. So let's find the next term. Let's see, what is the absolute value of 1 over 8 factorial? 1 over 8 factorial is 1 over 40,320 is definitely less than or equal to 1 over 1,000. That's going to make 1 over 8 factorial or 1 over 40,320 our first unused term because it is less than 1 over 1,000. So how many terms did it take for us to approximate this sum with an error of less than 0 0.001? It took us four terms. They're asking for the fourth partial sum, or s sub 4. Simply combine your first four terms, and you get 0 0.540277. We used the fourth partial sum because the fifth term was less than or equal to 1 over 1,000. For example 5, use an elementary series to find the actual value of the series in example 4. The elementary series that we have learned and are working on memorizing, wink wink, are sine x, cosine x, e to the x, and ln x. Take a look at those elementary series from your notes. This series looks like what power series? 
it looks like cosine. We have even factorials. So this series is a non-power series, meaning it doesn't have an X in it, that represents cosine of some number. Well, it looks like all the X's are being replaced with ones. That means this series is actually going to converge to cosine of its input, which is one. That is approximately equal to 0 0.5403. Wow, how cool is that? Look how you get to use elementary series to actually help you find the convergence of non-power series. This remainder, this alternating series remainder, there is technically a formula for it. This is how the formula looks. This is the Taylor polynomial version of your alternating series remainder, but it's really just referring to the first unused term.